Hi, I'm Steph Mills, Director of Customer Advocacy at Matillion, and I'm joined by Cecily Dixon-Brown, Divisional Director, Finance Strategy and Transformation, and Tom Back, Head of Investment Data at St James's Place Wealth Management. Cecily, let's start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about St James's Place and your role in the company? Thanks, Steph. Hi, everyone. I'm Cecily. As Steph noted, I'm Divisional Director of Finance, Strategy and Transformation at St James's Place. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I've been at SJP for four years and in summary, I manage a team of 10 to 15 people, depending on what projects we've got going on at the time. And we're focused on embedding change and data strategy into finance. Um, I'll give a little bit of background about SJP as well. We are sometimes described as financial services best kept secret, but we are actually a FTSE 100 company. We were founded on the belief that people need access to practical financial advice, and we give them this through face-to-face -face tailored financial advice, and that's delivered exclusively by our qualified expert advisors who make up our partnership. We've got about 900,000 clients that trust us. That's, that's real people who trust us to look after their hard-earned money. And um, that makes up about 150 billion of funds under management. Fantastic. Thank you, Cecily. And Tom, coming to you now, what's your role at St. James's Place? Um, so I sit within the investment management side of the company, which is very much focused around the construction and management of the SJP fund range and portfolios and supporting all of our partnership with the um, investment services and wraparound uh, information that they would need to advise their clients. Uh, so I'm the head of investment data, where I'm responsible for all data governance, strategy, engineering and management activities within the asset management side of SJP, uh, where I lead a, a multifunctional team very similar to Cecily, uh, looking to implement a, a range of BAU processes and data initiatives within the investment division. Additionally, I work with our colleagues in group data services to ensure the quality and fitness of investment and fund data across the broader SJP landscape. Tom, staying with you for the moment, can you tell us how you and your team are using Matillion today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so achieving the right outcome for our clients is at the centre of everything we do within SJP, and that has informed our distinctive investment management approach. Uh, we believe that investment talent is not limited to a single firm or location, uh, and we aspire to have a best in breed network of fund managers. And we do this by going to external fund managers uh, to get the best quality management and advice we can, uh, giving our clients diversification of investment and expertise that's beyond the scope of many independent wealth advisors. Um, this combined with a initiative last year where we brought in enhanced front office fund monitoring research capabilities uh, within the company and initiated an operational excellence program for our back office, giving us a score of data challenges to overcome in integrating multiple different source systems uh, across all of the different external fund managers we work with, which is uh, around about 50 distinct companies, uh, working with internal systems and processes to integrate that into a centralized uh, investment data hub to support all of our investment activities. And Matillion really sits across all of this as our integration and ETL solution within investments. Um, if the investment data hub is the heart of what we're doing, Matillion is the circulatory system pumping everything around. Amazing. And you certainly have a very really important role within that, Tom, for sure. And Cecily, shifting gears slightly, um, how will transforming financial data at St. James's Place empower you to embrace a more digitally enabled future? So in SJP, we're roughly two years into a five-year program that's aimed at building our long-term ability to make better use of our data and to support and create more opportunities for our partners and clients and the wider business. Um, so specifically with regards to data, we're adopting a, a federated model. So we've got a, a sort of central data function that leads on enterprise data strategy, governance, data quality and analytics. And it's also there to support expert data domains or centers of, centers of excellence in their field of data around the business. So, so those are data domains which are each responsible 
for the day-to-day management of their own data, um, you know, subject to following standard, agreed standards and architecture. And, and, um, and we're doing it that way because we passionately believe that leveraging the full power of our data can only be achieved by enabling the users of our data to do more under their own steam. Um, finance is one of those centers of excellence. So I'm building a team of SMEs, we, we're calling them data ninjas, um, as, um, as, as, is, as is Tom in investments. Um, in finance, I'll just give you a little bit more background. We're, we're undertaking a, an overall finance transformation. So we've articulated our vision. We want to be known for being, um, we want to be known for, for using our deep understanding of the numbers and our trusted relationships around the business to influence and support the strategy, really to support the strategy and the business, as well as that sort of hygiene factor of keeping SJP financially safe and sound. Um, But what we've been finding is that we're really spending far too much time undertaking manual processes, sort of cranking that handle and, and, um, you know, resulting in, in possible controls risks. We're a team of 90 people in finance, um, we're a mixture of actuaries and accountants, did a back of the envelope calculation the other day where we worked out that we've got about 300 years of professional qualifications between us. I mean, that's quite a lot, but not only that, we've also got like double that in experience. So we're a team of massively qualified, skilled people and, and people just don't want to be spending all their time in front of spreadsheets anymore. It's slow, it's error prone, it doesn't make enough use of the skills and experience we've got. And and really passionately, I really believe it contributes to the bean counter reputation, which I really think we should be moving away from. I mean, it really doesn't represent the value that a highly functioning finance department can bring to the business. So we've been undertaking um, a transformation which is focusing on systems architecture, automation, upskilling, um, but bringing it back to data, there is absolutely no point in doing all of that if you're not confident in your data. How, how can you sit down with the business and provide insightful analysis and support those business decisions? You've got to be sure that the data you're working with is accurate, well-defined and easy to access. And, and that's why data is such a huge part of our transformation program and and particularly focusing on the quality and the governance of our financial data. Agreed. And and some of those numbers were astounding, uh, Cecily, to be honest. And I'd love to be a data ninja, actually. That sounds fantastic. Um, But so how can data users visualise the benefits brought by better data usage and output? Yeah, it's a really good question. And, and I, do, I do want to be clear that we are still at the beginning of our journey and we've still got lots to do. Um, but we're very clear that data visualisation is the way of supporting and strengthening our controls framework and gaining insight from our data. So it's crucial that as many people in the business are able to confidently work with tools such as Power BI and Tableau and, of course, Matillion and... Uh, um, sort of taking that a step further, a key mantra for us is augmentation, not just automation. So this this is about getting people the right tools and automating the right activities so that we can increase controls and productivity across the group while retaining and developing our people asset. And if I may, I just just thought some examples um, might bring this to life. So in time, like I said, we're still at the beginning of our journey, but in time, we would hope we would aim to be able to show visually, for example, which client demographics are making use of their ISA and their pension and their other allowances and and where there are further investment opportunities. We'd like to be able to show models of client behavior, like really visualize those on dashboards and, and understand what impact, for example, does frequency of interaction with their partner have on client withdrawals and how that might vary with demographics. And and just lastly, more on the sort of control side, because that is really important to us in finance as well as it is across the business, is that we'll be able to better monitor our third party admin system, for example, and and how the the transaction processing is going and whether that's as expected and how many errors there've been and how, how many corrections are needed and how much that's costing and what the cause of those 
errors are and then we'll really be able to delve into into the detail on those much better and that i mean that is a huge number of people affected you know people inside your organization that are going to be able, they're going to feel more supported um, through the, the use of data and then your customers too you know i can only imagine the benefits to the experience that, that that's going to have and, and Tom's coming to you now, we, we, you spoke earlier about how you use Matillion. What specific capabilities are you using? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, so the primary use case for Matillion is we use it as our ELT solution. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a nice nice bit of kit that sits behind the scenes a lot of the time. Um, that a lot of people within uh, our division and in fact the broader company are not necessarily uh, fully appreciative of, um, but it enables so much processing and transformation and sometimes even just transfer of uh, data. Uh, it supports a very broad range of processes. Uh, the primary use we use, as I said, is uh, looking as our ELT solution into our centralized uh, data hub. Um, but we do use several specific uh, connectors and capabilities within the tool. Uh, like one of the ones that I'm particularly fond of is the IAPI connectors, um, which is actually quite uncommon, I think, in a lot of ELT or ETL solutions, um, where you have to go out of product to find that kind of API connection. Um, of course, that's starting to become less uh, common these days. But as we're working on a Greenfield project, a lot of the vendors we work with don't want to send batch files uh, that you'd historically uh, have had to deal with uh, in previous years and have API capabilities uh, native. Um, so just being able to access effectively their data dictionaries, pull out whatever information we want to support our own processes uh, in a single uh, tool is really quite powerful. Um, we really like the Git integration um, within Matillion. It means that it's a very simple way to ensure that our developments are appropriately stored and versioned. Uh, and the big, big capability that uh, the tools brought us is the uh, programmatic components such as R or Python, which um, opens up a whole world of transformation and processing activities within uh, that ELT. Uh, type product that historically haven't always been there, um, giving us a lot more ability to uh, wrangle our data and restructure it and transform it the way we actually need it to be consumed. Um, and also has opened up quite a broad uh, efficiency on several other parts of our uh, data estate, such as it's allowed us to implement a schema on read approach. Um, going back to my previous comments with we're working with over about 50 different investment houses. Uh, I'd like to say we have um, somewhat static data, but we tend to find that as the markets change, we want additional information or we need to change the structure of the in inbound data feeds. Uh, and having the schema and read approach allows us to effectively add in columns automatically as and when uh, they arrive from the vendors which means we are able to work with a much greater amount of agility and respond to change much faster than we traditionally would. And so let's come to the efficiencies that using Matillion is bringing. Um, what new efficiencies does Matillion bring to your workflows? Uh, yeah, so Matillion brings a range of components and con uh, connectors, um, which means we can use a single product to deliver a whole range of different development um, initiatives and pipelines where traditionally we would have had to see us, uh, sorry, we'd have had to have jumped between uh, several different products. Uh, going back to my previous example of using an API network uh, to connect to an ETL solution. Um, another real good efficiency is the low code approach to Matillion. Uh, so Matillion is a very easy to use interface. It's very low code, it's drag and drop, which almost gives us a common set of standards or a common language for integrations, uh, allowing for greater collaboration amongst our engineers and developers, uh, very much reducing the, uh, the effect of, you're the last one to touch it, so you need to do all future development on that process. It means that it's made it a lot more accessible to a lot of different people. 
um, almost in fact to reducing the barrier to entry for non-data specialists, uh, allowing some users to be able to build their own workflows, uh, supporting visualizations and bespoke analysis, uh, which is an area we're currently experimenting with and seeing how we can actually empower uh, traditional non-data professionals to manage their own workflows and transformations in a more structured and safe way without having to have a, a massive drive to upskill them. Um, so effectively it helps to break down walls and has taken a broad step to democratizing data within the environments we're working with. Um, and at the risk of being cheeky, the consumption-based pricing I find very efficient as well from a budget perspective. Well, that's very good to hear. Um, and it is fascinating to hear the effect that Matillion has on efficiency and productivity. Um, Cecily, how will SJP be supported by better data outcomes? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, better data across the business is going to enable us to remove a load of manual processes. I've talked about manual processes a lot. In particular, we've got we have got lots of manual processes around the business that they, they've evolved over years to cope with poor data. Um, you know, processes that we've had to put in place as sort of manual workarounds, and and often they're tactical processes, they're manual, they're replicated across the business. Um, it uses an awful lot of resource, and and um, and by resource I mean highly skilled, highly valuable individuals. Um, and having better data will free up those people to really use those valuable skills and add value elsewhere. And um, that question, it actually really resonates with our aims under the finance transformation. So as I said earlier, if we want to provide insightful analysis to better support the business, then we've got to first free up our valuable and highly skilled people from all those manual processes that they're doing. Um, and second, we've got to be sure that we're working with data that's accurate, well-defined and easy to access. And, and that, together with the other streams of our finance transformation program, will enable finance to provide the business with robust value-add analysis, which really better supports them and their strategic decision-making processes. Absolutely. And, and many of our customers do talk about manual pr processes. Um, and, and the effects that has across the business. And just following on from that subject, Cecily, from your experience at SJP, what do you feel are the key obstacles the organisation will face as you transform the way you handle financial data? So I, I think there's three points, I'd say, and some of these are, are not SJP specific. Some of them are, are, are you know, relevant to, to anyone. Um, the data programme we are undertaking is huge. Data touches almost every activity and every part of the business. That'll be the same for, for most businesses. Um, any program of this size and across the data program, we're really focusing on ensuring we've got this needs, um, I'd say, collaboration, coordination and communication. It just so happens they will begin with C. Um, there, there needs to be a real people focused approach. What the program is trying to achieve, it, it's not simple but it can and it needs to be expressed in simple terms so that people, people feel they're being brought on the journey. They need to feel they're being brought on the journey and that will really help. And, and they need to understand what we need from them and that will really help. And they need to understand that we understand what they need. Um, so it's all about um, collaboration, coordination and communication it, it is the first thing I would say. And, and secondly, building on that sort of people-focused approach, I think this is really important. People need to understand that data and jobs are not mutually exclusive. Currently, lots of people spend time sorting data out on a day-to-day -day basis. It, it's a big part of what they do. Um, once the data is all accurate and well-defined and easy to access, oh, and by the way, we've now got automated systems and architecture, they, you know, they understandably wonder whether their job's still going to exist and and really in order to help resolve any resistance from that it's really important really important for people 
to understand what the future holds for them. And we strongly believe that we can have good systems and data and good, plentiful jobs at the same time. In finance, we've been really clear that jobs, I mean, jobs will change as a result of our transformation, but we're not expecting the number of jobs to decrease particularly. And in finance, a huge part of our transformation is an upskilling program to put our teams in a better position to be able to sit with the business and support those strategic decision-making processes. And actually, Steph, I think that brings us quite neatly back to that data visualization piece that we were talking about earlier. And you, and you asked about that. And, and we want to help people become skilled in these data interpretation and data visualization tools. Um, and, uh, you know, Power BI, Tableau, Matillion that, that I mentioned earlier as well. H high level skills require higher grade tools and vice versa, higher grade tools require higher, le higher level skills. Lastly, um, a big part of SJP's, this, this one is quite SJP specific, a big part of SJP's success story um, and really ingrained into its culture is the can-do attitude. SJP is a wonderful place to work because if you see something needs doing, you're empowered and supported to go and do it. And historically, there's been very little bureaucracy or red tape. As SJP gets bigger, we're conscious that we will need to work harder and harder to ensure that departments and decision making remains joined up. And by all working together, we need to work together to ensure efficiencies for one area don't result in inefficiencies for another area. Agreed. And I mean, that comes back to the three C's, right? And they, so they were communication, collaboration and coordination. That's it. There we go. That's the important, important parts there. Um, and Tom, before we close out, I have one more question for you. Uh, Matillion is the data productivity platform. Can you tell me what does the phrase data productivity mean to you? That's a really good question. Um, so data productivity means to me effective and efficient refinement of raw data into information and insight that's adding value to our core business functions and ultimately driving better client outcomes. And to break that down a little bit, I think there are two underlying factors that kind of drive that, which is primarily reusing existing pipelines and data assets, having sight of what currently is available, what can actually be capitalized, uh, when, you know, as Cecily was literally just talking to, when somebody's already running a process, we don't need to re-engineer that same process to run elsewhere. Um, and effectively stepping towards treating data as a product and having a set of defined data assets that can be used to support analysis as and when needed. Um, and that needs to have a, a robust data ownership and governance uh, process wrapped around it to ensure that all of our data is fit for purpose. The second element that I think is, is related to data productivity is effectively having a quicker time to market, as it were, for driving new insight and functionality. Um, the, the idea of having a six month development cycle uh, to have a new process or a new piece of insight going live is a thing of the past. We need to work with a lot more reactivity and agility, uh, particularly in the financial services sector than we ever have had to before. Uh, so I think the, there's a large element of data productivity that has to have the underlying frameworks, tools and processes well defined so that when we need to spring into action, uh, as we're all data ninjas, uh, we have the, we know what we're doing. We have the frameworks there. We, we can just get on and do it. Um, and I think those are the two key drivers for data productivity for me. Uh, both of which I think are particularly relevant uh, in the current economically in certain times. Thank you, Tom. And it's a very exciting time to be at SJP at the moment. And in fact, from, from what you've both said today, it's an exciting time to be in the finance industry uh, with this modern way of thinking. I just want to thank you both so very much for your fascinating insights. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the session and we'll end it there.